an honest look And then these words he whispered in my ear I'm saving a coupon for mother Saving green coupon for mom Since father did croak We've all learned to smoke We need all the coupons there are So please think of mama and I, sir Each time that you buy a cigar I'm saving green coupons for mama To purchase a tombstone for pa So you see the car's on the ground and we're getting ready to uh, put it in the paint booth. And we got the thing all sanded, block sanded down. I went around it, did my final body work job to it. We had a few imperfections. So it's looking nice. Many, the body shop girl, she's got to finish this quarter panel. She's got to go over it one more time with 320. But what you were, you were watching on the sanding job is I'm actually sanding this down with 180 grit with my DA. And then that's the final sand job on that because we're putting a vinyl top on this car. So it doesn't have to be real super nice. All it's got to be is roughed up so the paint will stick. Um, it's probably going to look like crap. I've already informed the owner of that. And there's no sense, if you're putting a vinyl top on the car, there's no sense wet sanding or dry sanding that down to top quality uh, perfection. And the reason for that is, is because you're putting a vinyl top on it. Why do you want to waste your time? So I've been using a DA sander right here with 80 grit. And this is a finished sander. It's a short throw sander. If I was using a... Uh, a long throw sander, it would cut a lot, lot faster, but since I had that one out, I went ahead and used that, so. We had some situations with that paint. I wasn't happy. Everybody knows that. You saw what happened, but we got the problem taken care of. All the body work is done on the deck lid and the front, uh, I guess you call that a valance. We'll call that the upper valance uh, section of the hood. So all that's done, everything's painted. The next thing we're going to do is pop this baby in the paint booth and get her painted. What a big job. Oh, you're here with uh, trick or treats, huh? Refreshments. I don't want any refreshments. I want to see you do a trick. Or isn't this Halloween? Well, it's not Halloween, but I could disappear. Okay, oh, is that a trick? <laughs> no, I'll tell you what. You need to, get, you need to show me a trick and get out how you get over there and start sanding that car. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah. I knew that was Got backfiring it. on you. Yeah, right? we don't want that. Not at all. Not today. We're real close to getting this thing done. Let's get her done. finally got the Vega in the paint booth finally got it all taped off we finally got the right color let's go check it out and see what we got so here's our Vega or should I call it a Nomad I don't know but um, very very long job very intense paint job not just paint job restoration I might say um, all the body work's been done to it we have block sanded the hell out of it, reprimed it, reblocked it, fixed dents on it from one end to the other, inside and out, outside and in. Ran into some real bad situations with this color green. Um, I'm starting to think green is a bad luck color for me, but uh, we finally got the right color and now we're in the stage of painting it. 
Now, I want to remind everybody that the roof on this car is going to have a vinyl top on it. So when I sanded this for paint, I only used a DA sander. And if you look real close, I don't know if you can tell, but uh, the roof does show DA sand marks. And I did um, contact the owner and tell him that we're not going to do a high quality finish job on the roof due to the fact that he's going to have a vinyl top on that. Now, I would like to point out I did drill all the holes for our um, moldings that go on the top of the car and then of course it comes all the way around here down to here. We went ahead and drilled, precisely measured and drilled the holes for the GT emblems that go on the fenders and then right now Manny the Body Shop Girl is in there getting the Nomad fiberglass pieces. We got one that goes right here like this and then the other one comes down like this and she's in there prepping those up so we can get those painted. But uh, the car's going to look really nice. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just paint this thing. We don't really have time to sit in here and watch my friend Pete paint. There's other videos where I'm doing that. I just want to get this thing done. So take a good look at it now. And then after you paint it, this is basically what you got right here. Ooh, what a big job. That took approximately five and a half hours to lay all that paint on there. Three full wet coats of paint and three full wet coats of clear. Oh man, look at that. I can't believe it's the same fucking car. I really, really can't. It's amazing. It's really, really amazing. But all I got to do now is paint the hood, this cowling piece right here, and the little small parts, and a few little small parts, and we're done. But this car, I'm going to be honest with you, I think, in my opinion, looks better than brand new. Everything laid down good, everything went on fine, uh, sprayed good, even the top. Um, once again, like I said, that's just DA sanded down, so we can have some paint on it, but even the top came out really, really nice. I'm really excited to see this thing once the vinyl top is on it. And um, get all the Nomad shit back on it. But the situation is, is my friend Pete won't see that. Because to be honest with you, as soon as I paint those little pieces over here, guess what? This bitch is done. It's going home. It's out of here. I'm done with it. This fucking thing's been in my shop for seven or eight years. Sitting around, waiting to get restored. We finally got it done. It's a done fucking deal. Color Santa buff. The owner can come all the way down here to Dallas, Texas, pick it up. And hopefully shake a hand, make a friend. And he's going to be a happy, happy guy. All we got left to do is the back door. We're going to hang that up, paint it inside and out. We got the front side of the hood. You can already see the back side's painted. And then, of course, we got the top and bottom of the front valance. So, not much left to paint. Um, one more thing we got to paint. And then we got all of the specialty Nomad pieces to paint, which means the body shop girl just got done detailing out and fixing all of the pinholes on it. So, yeah, we don't have that much to go. That's... Uh, We'll probably paint that in a couple days, get this thing down the road and done, and uh, the owner can come out here and get the car. Let me get all that done, and then we're going to do a walk around of the car once it's on the ground. Just do a quick walk around, recap the situation, and guess what? Our junkyard car has been fucking restored. situation we have is I'm painting all the small pieces and when I say small pieces we're talking the back door we got the hood in there we got uh, these pieces that go right here all right if you look right here you can see there's a piece that goes right here and right here and without those fiberglass pieces this ain't a nomad but the situation we have is I got one more coat of clear to put on those we're gonna go on the um, same booth when I'm done we're going to take a look at that stuff and then the last and final journey on our 
1976 Nomad is going to be our color sanded buff. I got a color sand this car, I got to buff it, and hopefully we're going to finish that up tomorrow. And when that's all done, this son of a bitch is gone after seven or eight years of being on my property right here at SWRNC. So while we're waiting for the clear coat to dry so I can put the final and last coat of clear on our eight or nine, 10, 11 year project, let's go back there and see what we started with and uh, you'll see where we ended up in a few minutes. So if we take a walk back here, that's our car right there. That's the job that started the whole thing is our black 1976 Vega that sat in a, a junkyard out in Amarillo, Texas for like 25 years, 30 years. And this was the true 100% Nomad right here. You can see where the um, vinyl top was. And I don't remember what color this was on this vinyl top, but uh, it did have some uh, remnants of the vinyl top when we got it. And then of course it comes down to here. And then right here, you can see how important this piece of chrome right here is because this is where it's cut off. And then this is where our fiberglass piece takes over right here. And then this window, um, I believe it comes down like this. And then this one here hooks on here and then it comes up here. So this whole area is covered with that fiberglass piece of trim. And if we look inside the car, here is actually the inside piece of that trim that would go right here. Uh, okay, that's not the piece I'm looking for. Well, maybe it's this one here. Okay, so let's see. This would go like right here, see, inside the car. And then you kind of get the idea. Let me see if I can leave it there. You can kind of get the idea of what the back window area looked like. And the reason I'm showing you this is because when this car leaves, we're not going to see it completely done. We won't know what it actually looks like as a Nomad because when I get done painting it, color sand and buffing it, this car's gone. It's out of here. Um, let's look at this other car here and see what we did to this to make us decide that we're going to have to get another car. So we got this one in the car and we worked on it and we got it going and we found out all this area was rotted and rusted. So we went ahead and cut that out, this section right here. And we had to buy another parts car, which is right there, to get the core support and all the front end pieces we needed to actually get this car hooked up and possibly running. Now, before we did all that, we went ahead and pulled the motor, the transmission, we pulled the dash out. We completely gutted this car out because we were going to restore this car, remember? We got to this situation right here. And this is basically where the culprit said, no, we won't be restoring this car. This car is crushed in, it's totaled out, the fenders and the hoods and the front ends will never line up because this car had gotten hit in this corner and it pushed it so hard that it buckled this area up to the point of no return. So then, me and Minnie the Body Shop Girl went down to, uh, I don't know what even part of Texas you call it, down by Houston. And we found a car, our buddy down in Houston, Rocker Pat, actually found another station wagon, which is the one that we're restoring now online. But that one turned out to be a very hellacious job as well because it was massively, and when I say massively, I'm talking about extremely covered in hail damage, which I didn't even know that when we bought the car until after we actually stripped it. Um, that red primer that was on it really hid a lot of the damage on it but we went ahead and got that car and we proceeded to restore that one instead of the black one and now the black one was used for a parts car such as this car right here so it took three cars and let me say that one more time three cars to actually build one car now the owner our buddy Keaton out there in La La Land says that he wants to keep all these cars and I told him, well, if you're going to keep all these cars, you need to get your shit together and get the fuck out here and start hauling all these cars off. Because besides the cars, 
if we look in the distance over here, we actually have not just one motor, not just one fucking motor, but two fucking motors and two transmissions, actually three transmissions. So he's got a lot of shit that he needs to get off my property. And let me tell you what, it's going to be a hell of a deal watching him load all this shit up and getting it out of here. Now, my friend Pete's a pretty nice guy. If he wants to keep his shit here for a little while, I don't care. But the real deal is, is I'm trying to get the fuck out of here. And until all this shit's gone, I can't go nowhere. That's one of the things holding me back. So when I'm done with his Vega, he's going to have to make serious arrangements to come get this shit and get it out. Okay, I can't leave this thing outside. I can't put a car cover on it or a tarp and let the wind flap around on it and fucking ruin a brand new paint job like this. So I'm gonna have to keep this car inside storage until he decides to come and get it. So let me go ahead and get that last coat of clear on our parts. And we're gonna go in there and look at them, do a little walk around as usual. Um, I'm really satisfied with the way the fiberglass pieces turned out. Uh, they were in seriously, seriously bad condition. And we're going to look at those in there, and I think you're going to be amazed. I think that this car looks better than the day it was built in the factory. And that's just my opinion. And when we go stand above this thing, it's even going to look more awesome. So. Let me get that done. We're going to come back and look at that shit. And we'll see you then. Well, it's now official. Our 1976 Chevy Vega Nomad is completely 100% painted. Let's go check it out and see what we got. And there you go. Wow. It's finally came to the day that I've been waiting for eight years. Oh, the hood, awesome hood. I really like the lines on that Vega hood. I mean, just take a look at it. It's just an awesome piece of metal if you really think about it, the way that it's formed and shaped. Um, to be honest with you, the body lines of the Vega were really, really unique. Uh, I always liked the early model ones because they reminded me of a miniature Camaro. But um, you can see this was an inside and out paint job. Everything's painted. We even got the glove box painted to match the dash, so that's done. We got our front of the lance, it's painted. We got our grill, real nightmare right there, but we finally got it done. It's a done deal. Um, there's actually chrome strips that pop on the edges of it right here and really set it off. That came out nice, I like that. There's our uh, rear deck lid. We actually went through three of those before we actually used one that actually was worth using. Thank God we had one. Um, this one had some minor bodywork in it. The other one was rattled with hail and the back of it was completely dented. And then I think there was another one we had and it was just a pile of shit. But the one that originally came with the car that we restored, it was towed. And then here's the pieces that was the worst of the whole car. It was these fiberglass pieces and many the body shop girl. Come on in here. We're gonna have to give her a big hand because she did an awesome job. What do you think? Over here. You think you did a good job on that? 
I don't see any pinholes, I don't see nothing. Slick. That was what, two day job? Cleaning those Not things back up. up in yeah. What do you think? Good, they look great. I didn't think we were gonna be able to save these fiberglass pieces. I mean, they were in really, really seriously bad shape. Uh, the headlight buckets, they were in seriously bad shape, but look, once again, many of the body shop girl took the time meticulously filling pinholes with uh, polyester filler, sanding them down. They were hitting, that's for sure. Yeah. Everything looks good, guess what? After tomorrow, we'll be done. Tomorrow's the last day we're working on it. Guess what tomorrow is? Finish that. Color sand buff. Get her done. There you go. So you better get a good night's sleep because we got a lot of sanding to do. Maybe the sander girl. I'm ready, ready. All right. All right. You know, I'm just going to be honest with you. Minnie is a very big asset to SWRNC. Without her helping hands, none of this would actually be possible. So, this is a, a very happy day, even though um, we're not in Moab, Utah. This is one step closer to getting there. So, um, we're going to go ahead and color sand and buff all this. And hopefully the owner will likely sees. And the next time you see us, the owner will be picking his car up. And hopefully we'll see a happy face as he's leaving. And you know whose happy face that is going to be? Right there. <laughs> because guess what? I won't have to listen to Pink bitch about this car no more. <laughs> and you won't have to look at it anymore. Ever it will be again. Because what's your motto? I'm the best day is the day they go home. It's the day they go home, exactly. So we need to get this thing color sand buff tomorrow. It's not that big of a car, but it's a big car. Yeah. And, and a vinyl top on it, so vinyl we, top, we don't even have, have to buff that. Top. All we got to do is the sides and the deck lid and the hood, and it's a done deal. Done deal, man. It won't take long at all. Adios, amigos.